Obviously, we're not out in Metairie. The rain kind of pushed us back inside the Better Call Botto studio. But we saw a lot in day two, as expected. Alante Taylor and Paulson Adibo did switch. Alante Taylor was the other outside cornerback working with the ones today. We also saw Troy Pride have another big day, the third year defensive back. And also, did Blake Groupie handle the moment? We'll find out in today's show. Yeah, I'm just glad, happy you're here because what they don't know is that you almost took a tent to the back of the head. And you, I did take a tent you, to you, the back of the you head. You ducked it at, like, at the <laughs> last second. And, and it was it was almost a very uh, low moment for us here. But we are coming to you from the Better Call Botto podcast studio. And I guess Brooke could have definitely called Botto <laughs> with that tent. <laughs> hit her in the head and boy that would have been bad, the for me was bad because tommy is good at his job so we do not want to see him in court but the one per people we do want to see we want to see pjs at many, their many locations all throughout the city so go check them out they are our presenting sponsor they have the best coffee they will get your day started every single day and if you need to get a car go check out my guy map hours he has the best car dealerships in the gulf south they are all over the place any type of car you want He's going to take care of you. I vouch for how his operation runs. And uh, if you're going to go to PJ's, drive one of his cars there. They got the best coffee, as we said. Locations all over the city. So get there and start your day with them and maybe play uh, our podcast alongside while you're sipping your coffee. And if you need legal help with any of the following, car wrecks, offshore injuries, 18-wheeler collisions, Maritime and Jones Act, hurricane and storm claims, you better call Botto at 504-323-7777 or 985 985- 303-7777 for your free consultation and case review. And check out Hard Hide Punch Tool Strawberry Whiskey. That is an 86-proof blend of aged wheat bourbon, American light whiskey, and fresh punch to tool strawberries blended in New Orleans. It is not for the thin skin. Look for it in your favorite stores, bars, and restaurants. And get to an ideal market, home of the freshest produce in the city. They do a great job in the community. They received the Peter J. Larkin Award from the National Grocers Association for Outstanding Community Support. They always bring the best quality food products at the best prices. They are the home of the largest variety of Hispanic and international foods you will find in the state. A hot deli that surpasses many restaurants in the flavor of their authentic Hispanic dishes. And also the best place to cash checks, wire money, pay bills. They have a complete customer service department like no other. And... Check out Firehouse Subs, Veteran Boulevard location. Great people doing great things for the community. All right, let's get into the show. Practice number two is in the books, and it was another full practice out in the heat. And it seemed like the temperatures out there started to get to some of the guys. I even saw Derek Carr and Traquan Smith at some points crouching down to the ground or bending over. And we actually saw two guys that exited practice early because of the heat, Keith Kirkwood and Shaq Davis. And then Colin Saunders did not finish practice because of an illness. Is Are we maybe getting to the point where some practices will start to go inside oh without question i yeah. mean that was the plan from the very beginning and I, dennis allen worded it a certain way where he said something like i didn't think that'd be prudent for the first two practices they want to set a tone they want to get some outdoor work uh but they're going to go they're going to go indoors plenty um i think they've been efficient practices not necessarily long mm-hmm. so that they don't have to be out in the heat that long but getting a lot of plays in running gassers at the end getting them inside um, the fans are going to be coming out, though, so uh, they are going to have to weigh that. I think we might also see a lot of that combo uh, where where they do, like, stretch and walk through yeah. inside and then come outside for the last hour, hour and a half. Yeah, it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> it's hot. Yeah, no, it's definitely hot. And I don't even think we're in, like, super hot days. The first two days haven't been brutal yet. It's not like you're out. There's days when you're out there and you're just, you're, you're baking, you're begging for mercy. I don't think we've hit that yet, but it's still extremely hot out there. So, yeah, it makes sense. And you got to be smart about it. There's science on this stuff too. They yeah. have tracking devices in these guys, so they know how much they're moving. There's metrics they use to know when guys are overexerting themselves. They know when they're getting into the danger zone. We know that DA is a little bit more open to information than maybe pre- previous mm-hmm. regimes here. So I just think that he's going to be smart. He's going to be educated. He's going to listen to the people that study this stuff and make the right decisions for the team. And I think they're already doing that. You know, he Dennis Allen did say though. I thought it was interesting. So many people, I mean, I can see Twitter replies in my head or, you know, radio calling, you know, practice out in the heat. It'll make you tough or whatever. But he acknowledged that part of it, too. Like, he's like, there is something to we survived, you know, the metal and the toughness of training camp was hard and I had to find an extra gear. And they don't want to eliminate that either. And he said the coaches have talked about goes, you know, you got to be smart because it's real serious medical stuff. 
and you also want to make sure they fight through something. So they're trying to find that balance. Well, if, the, if Hollywood's taught us anything, is that the old way of thinking and the young way of thinking, the young whip, whippersnapper always needs the old person to tell them, and then they meet in the middle, and that's the best one of both worlds. So what I think there is. What movie are you thinking of, right? This movie? I, I had Days of Thunder. I was thinking head. of Up in the Air. Oh, wow. So, yeah, I mean, oh, you know, okay. Anna Kendrick, like Fast Talk and George Clooney, the, the yeah. grumpy guy, and then, you know, they kind of find the, the balance there. But that's kind of the way it is, though, is, is, is I think that there is something to the old way of doing things, but just doing things the old way is often quite, mm -hmm. you know, outdated and, and maybe a little bit dumb and you know if you do things too far the other direction it's probably a little bit so i think that there needs to be that that meshing point and i think he's he's right i think that is the right way to do it us being in the better call Botto studio does is not heat related we were getting into some scary waters with the wind and a potential storm coming in so we're back in studio there was also only one player that was not at practice entirely and this is a little bit concerning. Trevor Penning missed the entire practice because of a foot injury. I know when you hear that, you think of the surgery. Well, Dennis Allen said it's not related to the surgery he had this offseason. It is something the Saints will monitor, though. Under or overreaction on this? Well, I mean, until we have more data points on him, I, I think it's 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 scary. I mean, every single time he touches the field, there's a foot injury, it seems like. And here's another one. He just got back. Here's another one. So, yeah, okay, maybe he'll be back tomorrow in the feelings of today or, or you know, we, we find out quickly, but he needs to prove that he can practice consistently, play consistently, be on the field. There is a lot riding on this guy to be a pillar of this team. And right now it's like he can't stay on the field. So, you know, I, I don't want to be unfair to Trevor, but just the reality of the situation is, is that he has a lot of foot issues. And until he doesn't, he's a guy that's going to be looked at extremely skeptically and frankly, like if we were starting to trust him, I'm just reminded again that I can't, I can't trust yeah. him. I can't count mm -hmm. on him as we're going to talk about him going forward. It's going to be a maybe like it's going to be in October. I'm going to feel like that way. I'm like, I'm scared of, of his availability right now until he just has that steady build and just he's out there and he's reliable and you can count on him. You can't right now. Absolutely. I mean, that's completely fair and scared is right. Like I'm not the immediately, you know this proves he'll never be healthy. Maybe right. he'll have a long, healthy career. But the nature uh, of the injuries for a really big guy, you know, that's a lot of weight to put on your feet, to have to carry your body and your feet. It's been both feet now, and Dennis Allen said this was not related to the recent surgery and that it's minor, but it's got to be related to one of the two feet he had surgery on last year. So it's a huge <laughs> concern. I mean, like, you know, I mean... <laughs> Hey, I'm just it's one stating of them. facts here. Yeah. It is it is related to two. one of the two feet he had surgery with uh, last year. Um, and so so I agree. I mean, hopefully this is minor. Hopefully he has a, a fully healthy camp. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've talked about him a million times, and he's definitely in that category mm -hmm. for me now that he almost feels like a, a, a bonus and not, not somebody that I'm confident is going to, you know, definitely be there what a shame we, we can think that you know I what know. a shame you, you're looking at him like well james hurst and then maybe trevor yeah but like we don't even know if trevor can can play like we don't know if he's good we don't know like he had a lot of rawness to him last year like he never got to a point where he was gonna be the starting tackle last year he was a developmental player and then he got hurt we never really saw the development we saw jumbo packages out of him but i i don't know if he can consistently block as a tackle because there just hasn't been that exposure he needs yeah. to get out there go through a camp show that he can do it like we're hoping for him to be healthy, but like technically, can he do the job? Yeah. You got to be on the field to learn that stuff. So every single day he's not out there, that's a setback. And then on the flip side, the way we've heard coaches and teammates talk about him, like he's also like an extremely exciting prospect. Yeah. Who, his long-term potential is through the roof. Like, like not like, oh, he could be a solid starter in the league. Like he could be a revolutionary type yeah. of mauler. So, I mean, this it's all over the map where where he could end up and and obviously for all of those results he has to be healthy that's what's concerning for me this has happened now when they don't even have shells or pads on this was in jerseys and we remember camp last year all the videos that went viral of trevor the mauler and like punishing guys at the line of scrimmage the fights yeah the fights it, yeah, he hasn't even had his first fight of I camp know. yet. I don't know. What the hell? Is this just even started? <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't got to Trevor's moment yet, but let's get to our moment of the day presented by New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. Mike, what was well, your best have. moment have. That was my worst moment of the day, Trevor Penning. Oh. So just needed to put a sponsor on. But uh, yeah, I'll go. Um, best moment of the day. Um, 
another player I think we're going to talk about later, Peyton Turner. I liked seeing him get a turn with the the mm -hmm. first string and uh, um, kind of capitalize on it a little bit in some spurts. But but a specific moment, there was one play that where Derek Carr fires it deep, and I'm following the ball. And I'm like, oh, he's throwing that for Mike Thomas. This is going to be great. And right as Mike Thomas can't come down with it, oh, that's Marshawn Lattimore batting it away. And I'm like, oh, we just saw Mike versus Marshawn. This is <laughs> like, you know, it's, uh, that's how I follow the play when I'm like, you know, just following the ball or whatever. Um, give me, and, and Peyton Turner actually had the pressure on that play that, that helped force an incompletion. But give me all the Mike versus Marshawn. That was an exciting moment mm -hmm. during, uh, during practice. Nick, what was your best moment? Yeah, for me, it's just a kind of a continuation of yesterday. It's like just DA's vibe in general. Like, I, I like how he's kind of carried himself the first two days of, of camp and kind of all throughout the summer. It's just he feels like lighter. There's jokes like I, I see more of DA's mm -hmm. personality and I like it. I just kind of I like the gassers. I like the vibe. I like the way that that just everything's kind of going. It feels like it's a little bit just it, it's together. It, and I like all that. So for me, that's. That's it on the field. You know, there were a handful of plays today. I guess my number one, since you mentioned the the Marshawn pass breakup, that would be one for me. There were a couple plays that I liked. Um, I'll go with the Rashid Shaheed diving catch on Alante Taylor on the sideline. I thought that was a really, a really good moment. It was a standout play. So that was probably my my best moment of the day. But man, I I'm just kind of struck right now about just kind of I just I really like like DA's whole mm -hmm. essence so far to start camp. Yeah, he feels comfortable, like which is a good thing. Um, not that he didn't last not year. Not that he didn't last year. In little, hindsight, though, yeah. we you know uh, we we pick apart everything. But even yeah, I mean, this is another sort of inside inside like what we do thing. Like even just today, he came out and uh, he kind of like read off today's injury report for us without being didn't even asked. Have to ask. Like he he said, these three players you may have noticed left practice early. Uh, he was dealing with the heat. He's dealing with an illness, and Trevor Penning's got a foot. And and I'm like. Like it was just kind of a like a, I you know I'm not gonna play subterfuge I'm I'm comfortable with what we're doing here no secrets here <laughs> yeah it's definitely a different vibe even when he even when he was talking about the gassers he was just joking with us maybe it's the gassers every time he goes to a podium interview he needs to run gassers before they get him fired up he was joking about having run the gassers next to the offensive linemen so he could it was insinuated that he could cheat and look better than having run in between Michael Thomas and Marshall Lattimore after the first practice he had to plead the fifth when somebody asked yeah, him he if was that giving was Prince by design. Of hell. Like he was, he was giving <laughs> like Prince, you could tell like, man, I can't let the coach out. I mean, yeah, he was yeah. giving him hell there. Yeah. For me, the best moment. And just because this is something I saw and I was like, wow. Okay. That looks like something that's clicking. It looks like the old Alvin is Alvin from Jameis Winston, Alvin Kamara, just a little nice back shoulder catch. And it was the speed as soon as he turned. I mean, it was like, looked like old Alvin and I hope to see more of that and we'll see if the connection comes together with Derek Carr and that's actually my worst moment of the day and I I don't want to say it's worst because it's a bad thing right now like Derek Carr is still trying to figure out the chemistry and the groove my worst moment is during seven on seven his second and third pass was one was just a misread and the other was overthrown that's gonna happen right now and I don't think it's a bad thing that we're seeing it but outside of that I don't really see anything terrible yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way coming out of it two days in a row. Nothing super alarming. I'm with Mike. The penning thing would, would have been my pick. Yeah. Like it's just that's that's bad. Like it's 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 a little bit. You know, let's see tomorrow what happens. Maybe everything's fine, but it's just absolutely the opposite mm -hmm. of how you would want camp to start. Kendra Miller was the only one with the fumble today, correct? Uh, Dowell forced one late, didn't he? I think it. Well, it was. Dowell had the recovery, right? No, Troy, Troy Pride, Pride. No, no, no. Troy, 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 Pride. Troy Pride on Kendra Miller. Did he have, make a football move? It was, it I don't was know. either a I don't pass know. breakup. I don't know. Or a forced fumble. Either way. I don't know a win what it catches. For Pride, a yeah. loss for Until Kendrick. we can define what it catches. Like it was maybe a catch. Like yeah. a common, it was a common sense catch. Was it an NFL catch? Who knows? And then uh, the sack fumble, fumble at the end. I thought that was Smoke Monday. Smoke, oh, that was Smoke Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and uh, hit Hayner to end practice. Yeah. And that was uh, Smoke Monday the last play yeah. the, the day the one thing i noticed though is kendra miller was off to the side running so that's definitely something we're seeing now is that if you mess up ball security is at an all-time high this training camp of course we saw the bear crawls Jawan johnson doing bear crawls with because of a ball security issue on day one and now kendra miller he wasn't doing bear crawls so i don't think he can with his knee but he was doing some off to the side work which i like that 
part okay, of so he, pun- he, he, I guess they called it a fumble. Then. I don't want to call it like punishment, but it's just acknowledging. It was that, either like, a drop or a be, fumble, yeah. so you know, or well, not a drop, a pass breakup or a force. No, fumble, it was before. Yeah. I what, what I'm talking about, it was uh, Kendrick Miller. It was the the ball got punched out by. Yeah, Troy Pride. Yeah, that's, and that's the play. About. Yeah, that's the play. Well, no, but yeah. there was one where everybody did not know what they saw it was when Jameis Winston had the deep ball. Oh, that was a, that's a pot- the one that, I'm that was a about. deep deep pass, potentially a PI or not a PI. Oh, yeah. It was an underthrown pass. The receiver that was had also, to come see, back. Troy to Pride yeah. is all over the yeah. field. We're all getting over, our Troy Pride <laughs> highlights I, mixed up. <laughs> I, I don't think it was a catchable pass, right. so I don't think they would have called it PI because you're trying to fight your way back to something that just is not reachable so yeah. i mean i i wouldn't call it pi but who knows but that, yeah. like i said they yeah. call everything crazily but look two days in a row troy pride has right. flashed multiple times for a guy that needs to flash probably mm-hmm. every single day to have a chance of making the team good place to start I, that one was a tough one for a number of reasons i also don't know if that was a plus or a minus for pride because rashid shaheed started that play a few yards behind troy pride pride <laughs> caught up enough to get himself in position yeah, the to, force fumble to, though, to, to not two, get away two and two yeah, days exactly. two and two days yeah well peyton turner has been someone we continue to talk about in just two years in the nfl he's only played in 13 games we can all agree that this training camp it's officially make it or break it time for peyton turner but there was something new in practice it's only day two of training camp but he was rotated in with the ones on the defensive line i thought that was big i mean uh, like overreaction season we always give that disclaimer but (laughs) yeah james hurst getting a turn ahead of andrews pete i think meant something on the first day of camp and peyton turner getting a turn this early in camp kind of surprised me i mean they were lauding Carl Granderson a lot last year, mm-hmm. uh, um, and I and all throughout minicamp and OTAs, I think Granderson was working with the ones every day that he was here. Um, and so I thought Granderson's with the ones and, and Peyton Turner's with the twos. The fact that that's already an open competition to start training camp, it, now it might be a hey, we we've got to throw Peyton Turner in the deep end of the pool and find out what we got. But at least he's getting that opportunity. And I thought for the second day in a row, he he had at least one flash moment, maybe two today. Um, so he's been healthy the entire off season. He's getting this opportunity now. Um, if, if it's going to happen, this is the summer it's got to happen. I mean, the best outcome is that these two guys actually get into a real competition. They elevate their play. They make each other better. Even if it's just to get more out of Carl, that's a that's a yeah. good thing. I, you know, I hope that Peyton Turner does compete and makes it competitive, and he's actually in that mix because that'd be a great thing for the Saints. But you know that one way or another, like it's it's just better not to just hand that off to Carl. He had five and a half sacks last year. Like you can't just put him in a position where he feels like he's yep. a made man. He's not a made man yet. They need to get a lot more out of that. So I like it. I like creating that competition. I, I, look, Dennis Allen is clearly competition is the theme of his 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 summer camp. Like uh, um, he's mentioned that word, you know, way more than I've heard him. You know, the competition is a part of every football, every training camp. It's the nature of the sport or whatever, but he's he's talking about how they want mm-hmm. to create that at every single position. And and his answer on Peyton Turner, he goes, yeah, part of that is he's earned those snaps. So the other part of it is somebody's got to take that role. Yeah. He said, uh, he said they're not going to give it to anybody. To to your Carl Granderson point, and and what he said is that role across from Cameron Jordan. So he's distinguishing between yeah, Cameron yeah. Jordan's earned something; these other guys haven't. Yeah, yeah. and go ahead, Nick. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Good yeah, on the Peyton yeah, Turner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Over no, or under just, hyping the first team. No, it's good to create real competition. I was just kind of like <laughs> laughing to myself because the one camp when Sean put up the compete street signs. They're still like, out there. They're still out there. They're still yeah, out there. But it's better to just have like actual real like I like this kind of competition a little bit better than you know symbolic uh, stuff out there. Yeah, and still to come on the show is Chris Olave going to have a bigger year? in year two is there an underrated player we haven't talked about and also how did the kicker out of notre dame do today we'll talk about blake groupie and all of those guys coming up after the break now at new orleans hamburger and seafood company get our 10.99 shrimp remoulade combos with zesty shrimp remoulade and fried shrimp or catfish for only 10.99 and did you hear soft shelled crabs are back at new orleans hamburger and seafood company Life is full of unexpected events, which can come with unplanned expenses. Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union has a variety of personal loan products to meet your needs. Whether it's treating yourself to something new, paying off an unexpected expense, or consolidating debt, we are here to help. With rates as low as 8.5% APR, a personal loan with Jefferson Financial can help. 
don't let life's curveball impact your financial happiness. Apply today at jeffersonfinancial.org. Membership restrictions apply. Federally insured by NCUA. Martin Wine and Spirits is home to a selection of hand-picked barrel select bourbon, whiskeys, and much, much more. They are family owned and operated since 1946 and specialize in wine, spirits, gourmet food, gift baskets, catering, and tasting events. They have many locations, so they're never too far away. You can check them out in Metairie, New Orleans, Mandeville, and Baton Rouge. Or if it's more convenient, you can always shop online. Whether you're a wine novice or a seasoned collector, you'll enjoy the Martin Wine and Spirit experience. Especially at the beginning of training camp, we take notice of guys who put on size in the offseason, especially the skilled positions. And look, Chris Olave has put on some noticeable size this offseason. And that gets into our money segment presented by Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union. How much better can Olave be in year two? I think that he, that, you know, I think Chris has the, the potential to be one of the better receivers in the league now. Whether he gets there or not is, is a whole nother question. But there's nothing about his game that is going to hold him back. He runs routes as well as anybody. He's athletic. He's 4-3 speed. He can get down the field. He can make plays in every level. It's just a matter of completing some of those plays, having the opportunity, continuing to build on it. And, you know, I, I think that there's like Stefan Diggs upside to his game. And I, I think he could get there. And adding some strength is step one to it. And, yeah, you could tell that he is a, a bulkier person. He's still lean, but I yeah. think last year maybe he was like kind of skinny a little bit, and he's he's now just like you know lean and muscular, and he needs that. Look, he dropped a pass today, so like it's not perfect, but everything we've seen up until this point has been Chris playing a little bit better, a little bit stronger. So, yeah, I think I think the sky is the limit for him. And as I said before, like if I'm buying stock on any player on this team going into the season. Give me all the Alave stock. Like, I think he can be one of the top tier players in the league. I think Derek Carr is going to help him achieve his potential. Yeah. And especially since he's so clearly identified an area of his game that he wanted to prove. And, and, and mm-hmm. so did Dennis Allen and so have the coaching staff. But that you see the steps he's taken to improve that already. I mean, the, the high pointed contesting catches we saw in OTAs and minicamp. And then, yeah, Derek Carr was talking a lot about, um, how well they're already meshing together. He was one of the ones Derek Carr wouldn't give the full list of everyone who went to, to Las Vegas. Cause he knew we'd pick that apart, but he was talking about Chris Olave mm-hmm. and he said, even in those two days, um, he, and he pointed to a very specific connection they made yesterday where he said he broke his route, right? At the exact timing and depth that Carr expected. And his quote was great. He said, now it just feels like he's my wide out mm-hmm. and I'm his quarterback. They're, they're past the getting to know you session and, the, and, and they're, you know, just, working out the nuances together now. Yeah. yeah. And I believe Chris said he put on seven pounds. Mm-hmm. I would have, I would not have been surprised if he said 10 to 15 pounds, but he still is lean. And one of the big emphasis for him this off season was the fact that he did not want adding on size to affect his quickness and speed. Have you noticed any change in speed? Everybody looks so fast when they're out there in shorts and right? t-shirts. I mean, <laughs> um, that that everybody looks faster. I mean, you just said like how Alvin Kamara looks like the Alvin Kamara of old and everything <laughs> like that. Yeah. In, in no way do I think he looks slower. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Look, here's the thing. Like Chris Olave could lose some speed and it wouldn't affect him. And he runs her out so well that he could lose even more speed and still create a ton of separation. Like, Sometimes it was just crazy watching him, the way he would cut and just guys are like up here falling off him and and he's way over here. Like Chris Olave looked open like perpetually for the whole entire season because he is just such a tactician with the way Mm -hmm. he runs. But my favorite thing he said today is someone asked him, they said, Chris, like last year when you were coming into the league, was there a moment where you felt like I can do this in the NFL? And he's like, first game. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? That so they, there's nothing lacking in confidence, and that's the kind of attitude you need if you want to be one of the best receivers in the league. And I'm certain that's got to be one of his goals this year. He proved he could back it up too. It wasn't just talk that he was confident in game one. He showed it, and then of course in week three he had to step up because wasn't it Landry and Michael Thomas mm-hmm. that both both went out? And he, in my opinion, carried the receivers. I don't want to say he carried the team because obviously when you only win seven games. You're not necessarily well, quarterback had a broken back too. Yeah, you know that what I mean? too. So, so yeah, it's he, a lot to put on a rookie wide receiver and yes. he handle the pressure. Yeah. And look, it's going to be interesting because there's support now. Like you, put, mm-hmm. you know, theoretically speaking, Mike Thomas is going to be on the field. Rashid Shahid's now starting a, at the beginning of the season. So you got guys that can attack at a lot of different depths. That's going to help Chris get open a lot more last year. He's kind of the, the guy you're mm-hmm. focusing on. There's Alvin back there and kind of nobody else. So 
I think just getting these pieces around him is going to open up the field. He's going to be able to make a lot more plays because teams can't just key on him. Chris was asked about Michael Thomas, too. We've obviously seen them on social media that they spend a lot of the offseason together trying to get some work in. And there's really sort of like a mentorship with Michael yeah. Thomas, not just with Chris Olave, but Rashid Shahid. And Michael Thomas has been a guy who has not traveled with a pack. He's kind <laughs> of been the lone wolf that's off on his own. But I like this, that Michael Thomas is getting more involved. Oh, no question. Look, they're in videos together all the time. And that it's I think it's a good thing for that room. The it more is. chemistry all these guys have together. And here's the other thing, too, like in that receiver room in particular, it's a lot of alpha dogs. It's a lot of people worried about their touches. It's a lot of people wanting their yards. We already seen it once here kind of go badly when Brandon Cooks was was the lead guy and Mike Thomas came in and, and kind of, you know, started taking away a lot of touches and a lot of attention. Cooks would kind of like groan when people would come <laughs> over and ask him questions about Mike Thomas. Like, so there can be a very negative aspect to that. But if you got people that are friends hanging out off the field, I think it's it's a little bit easier to look at the plate and feel like, okay, I'm, I'm getting mine too. He's getting his. And it doesn't maybe create that type of situation. So I, I don't think that there's anything bad that can come Completely from that. Completely genuine out. too. And it's not just mm -hmm. a social media thing. I mean, and it was, it well, was Mike doesn't Mike doesn't know how to be right, fake. Right. You know? You're yeah. exactly right. And, and it was immediate too. I mean, obviously they're both from Southern California. They both went to Ohio State. I mean, the connection is natural. Rashid Shahid's also from Southern California. So, but it, but it's genuine. That stuff's yeah. happening behind the scenes as well as on social media. Yeah. And to get into something you talked about earlier, Derek Carr taking some of the pass catchers, as he called it, because he didn't want to tell us who all was there, yeah. to Vegas. Chris expanded on it a little bit today, saying the things that they worked on, that it was about uh, developing routes, chemistry. They worked on short, mid, and deep routes, timing, body language. Have we seen this chemistry now translate to the field? I mean, I think so. Like I said, yeah, Derek Carr was breaking down a very specific play that 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 required, like, you know, it wasn't spelled out exactly. A lot of these routes are, are you know, sort of option routes or field routes and things like that. And he said it was, he, he, I didn't remember the play he was talking about since we couldn't back and watch tape, but he said, like, it was just like the depth and the timing of where he broke his route was exactly what I expected. And, and so, you know, it's not perfect. As you said, they missed each other twice today. Once just routes on air mm -hmm. and and once was it seven or is the, uh, the second pass of seven on seven um which was only notable because i realized we hadn't seen much of that yeah. you know he, he normally seems uh perfect when he's throwing him yeah and i think that pass was even maybe like a little that bit that was a yeah. low pass yeah. was a i wouldn't low. say yeah. that was on alave yeah, yeah. I, yeah. You that's why they, that, that was one it? of the two passes it was a low pass on the second one from Derek carr and then a third pass was overthrown so yeah. that wasn't all of I I, I want to see that though I want because there's going to be a time where where Chris Olave is covered in a certain in a certain way and you need to put the ball low and now you know where he can go down and get it like make those kind of mistakes now have those incompletions because then during the season you know what the limits mm -hmm. are you're testing it I want them to make mistakes now like for the way we do things we track every pass yeah. we track every throw we're going to keep the stats we're going to tell you he was four for five or two for five or whatever it is but ultimately, like none of that stuff really matters as long as it's coming together cohesively. And yeah, like I said, stretch the limits, make your mistakes, know what they can do. And then when you get in those situations, you know we, how far you we can We talked about a very specific moment in OTAs on, on one of the shows, and we wrote about too, where the exact same thing happened. He threw to Chris Olave in the side of the end zone, um, and, and Olave was beating himself up for not getting to it. But Carr said, you know, obviously, it, you know, it was a hard pass to get to or whatever. And they re-ran it threw it to the exact spot. I mean, they're working out exactly yeah. like, you know, where do you like to catch it? Where should I throw it where he will catch it? I mean, that is the kind of stuff they've been doing all summer. Yeah. Dennis Allen was also asked about Derek Carr's style of leadership today. Here was his answer. Probably a, a little bit more, um, you know, by, by action. Um, uh, but yet I don't think he's afraid to call somebody out if, uh, if necessary. So we had, we had that happen in OTAs. Um, you know, we had a receiver that, didn't know what he was doing. He got him out and got somebody else in there. So I, I think he's in full control of what we're doing offensively, and he's done a great job with his with his leadership. Um, you know, the number one thing about leadership is, you know, your actions speak so loudly, I can't hear what you say, right? And so that's the best form of leadership is go out here and, and, and do things right every time. Dennis Allen also said when they were recruiting Carr, it was important for Carr to know that they wanted to bring in Derek, not Drew Brees. And he kind of expanded on that a little bit that 
we want Derek Carr to be comfortable here in New Orleans, and it seems like he is. Yeah, Derek said both Mickey Loomis and and Dennis Allen said they just wanted me to be me, and and he said that's what I've been like, and I believe that too. I mean, I think he's worked at. I mean, he's been a nine year starter in this yeah. league, so I think he's translating some of the things that have worked from him with a hands on leadership standpoint but without and i asked tyron matthew about it and he gave a great answer he said because tyron matthew has worked with a lot of quarterbacks in, in a lot of different cities young and old including a great one that in in kansas city he goes some guys try to force that some guys feel like i'm the quarterback i'm supposed to be an alpha i'm supposed to take control of this room and he said some guys try to force that some guys it comes more naturally and he said derek derek feels like one of the ones that comes more natural. He has deferred to the fact that Cam Jordan and Demario Davis and other guys are already in Tyron and uh, Mike Thomas. He he listed a bunch of guys and he said they're already leaders of this team. They don't need me to like change the culture mm -hmm. uh, and, and change everything they've been doing around here. But they see that he shows up first. They see that he stays last. They see that he takes that extra time to talk with everyone and get it right. They see that he invites everyone to Vegas. So I think it's been a really good mix of. I'm going to put in all the work I need to put in without like trying to trying to, you know, cause any ripples. I, I like everything he's brought to camp so far. So yeah, he just seems genuine. And and I like that. He's like you said, he, he's himself. Mm -hmm. it, I also think there's some value to in having some time and distance from breeze. Like other guys, okay, you never want to be the guy that follows the guy. Right. Like we've already gotten through the whole, like comparing every little thing someone does to Drew Brees. Now, like, I think we probably all still kind of, go to that well a little bit because that's the barometer of greatness here. And that's kind of what you measure everybody against, but it does feel a little bit less like Taysom and Jameis took a lot of drew did things like this question. Drew drew practice like this. He stretched like this. He did this. His routine was like this. Like we haven't heard a comparison of Derek Carr's routine to Drew's yet, which is great. Like, I don't want to hear those questions. I don't need to see it, but there is a, a level of more like, Drewness from him at the same There's, time because yeah. he, he, he is like we an make actual those guy. Comparisons, like we, I think we've apologized a total of eight times already in, the, in, in on these podcasts for saying I'm not comparing him to Drew Brees or whatever, but it reminds you of what it was like when you had a routine oriented quarterback mm -hmm. who, who, you know, paid attention to all those details. And like, I'm not saying Jameis didn't or Teddy didn't or, or, um, uh, Taysom didn't or whatever, but there he there are a lot of things he does that remind me because Drew Brees was obsessed with yeah. routines and I can see that in in Derek Carr very much. For me too, it's the way he kind of commands the field and when he's out there, everything just kind of seems smooth with Derek. And even when he does have the mess ups, it's handled very quickly and kind of off to the side. Like nothing is a big production with Derek Carr. He has just a commanding leader, and I think that's something that's been missed here. Yeah, stay tuned. The guns out are a production. Yeah. Though. I mean, come on. Gosh. That's a production, right? We'll get to the kickers here. We've seen <laughs> both kickers, both punters. That competition is something we're keeping our eye on. But we got to see Blake Groupie. He hit all six kicks today. Yeah, he did. Uh, Will hit all of his yesterday. Yep. So it's going to keep going back and forth. We'll, we'll see how it shakes out. Um, you know, coming out of, out of the summer camps, Will had a higher percentage overall than, than Groupie. But he's obviously someone that, that's an effective kicker. Uh, if he doesn't win the job here, I won't be surprised if he eventually gets a chance somewhere else. If he continues mm -hmm. to progress the way we've seen him so far, he's a very capable player, but they have another very capable player that's been around for a while. And I think that you kind of have to overcome the comfort as well. So I think like for groupie to win this, he needs to be well ahead. And I don't know if he's going to get there. What about Lou Headley? We got to see him today. Yeah. And he's a little more accomplished on his college resume too, I think even then groupie was, uh, I think he was rated as a top five punter in most of the draft things. I saw he was a former all American two years ago, not, uh, not this, this past season. So he's real competition there too. It's a little harder to judge. We can't say Gilligan went six for six and, Ooh, and judge, Headley went judge. five for six. I, I know, I know, but you know what I mean? Like <laughs> there's not the cold, hard, what was their percentage or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, Nick has the stopwatch out and, and and has some things he can very specifically chart on. But I think that one feels like maybe there's even a longer way to go for him him to to win that job. Yeah, I think he's a little raw. I think he's a little yeah. raw. I think it's going to take him a little bit of time to, you know, get to a place. I think that's something that's going to probably have to happen in games, too, because there is game situations and 
he's been a little bit inconsistent throughout the summer, but he had three really good punts today to close out practice. One of them hung for 4.63 seconds, which is like a, a really good time. And it hit at the six yard line, went out of bounds. Then he had another one that was right around 4.6 seconds, hit at the seven yard line, went out of bounds. 4.5 seconds went out of bounds at the seven yard line. So like, even if those fell in bounds, cause he was kicking inside the 50, like the time up, like you aren't going to be able to return those. They're going to get caught and down. So he, he was very effective to close out that session. I thought it was, it was the best and the most competitive he's looked throughout this whole summer. So, you know, I was kind of overlooking him before. And then today it was like, you got my attention a little bit, but again, I think Gillikin's yeah. uh, ahead of him. I think there is a very long road to go for this guy to, to unseat the incumbent player. I think no matter what, the competition is great, especially with what Dennis Allen is trying to culture now in practice. It's going to be iron sharpens iron because if the two of them are really competing, other NFL teams are going to hear about this and want to pick those guys up. So it's good all around for those four guys. And since we're speaking of kind of the under the radar guys, let's get to our Martin Wine and Spirits question of the day. Martin Wine and Spirits is home to a wide selection of hand spiked or handpicked barrel select bourbon, whiskeys, and more. Flo asks, who is an under-the-radar player on each side of the ball that might surprise and flash during camp? Flo from uh, Progressive, huh? That's <laughs> just immediately what I think of when I hear that name. <laughs> um, look, I think someone that, that, I think he's like real. I think this guy's uh, the real deal. And, and we've mentioned him a few times. I, I think Ryan Connolly, the linebacker, is someone that might be an answer to those depth questions. He got my attention today. There was a pass in the flat. And like his range to get to the sideline and stop it in, in the backfield was was really, really impressive. And that's what you need to see. Like if you're going to come in and play for Pete Werner or you're going to play for Demario Davis, you got to show that range there. Now, I need to see more of him going backward in coverage a little bit and, and playing zone, but really good range coming down the field. And, and he caught my eye and he's been catching my eye throughout the summer. You know, it's funny. and I don't want to put this down. I would have liked to have seen it twice, but my answer for the offense under the radar is tough. Under the radar is tough for offense because right. we've talked about all these guys. But Foster Moreau had a really nice catch today. I think it was he behind did. Ryan Connolly. Um, I think he found a little space when Connolly was trying to get to him in coverage. And Moreau has just disappeared in the conversation because Jawan Johnson, now Jimmy Graham and Taysom Hill are all in his position group. But I, he's he stood out to me in both practices where I like. He just looks like a pro who, like, mm -hmm. we, we, you know, I don't expect him to be a breakout player. I'm not going to give any fantasy recommendations or whatever. But I think he's going to play a lot of snaps for this team. So he's really flying under the radar for me. And the other guy I wrote down is similar as James Hurst, just another guy we just assumed mm -hmm. was going to get beat out. Mm -hmm. And and I think th they've announced that that's a guy they really trust and and won't have any problem putting on the field, whether it's a guard or tackle. One more guy. offensively, I think Brian Edwards, too, is someone that he, he's he's making, like, plays on, on slants and different things, making physical catches. That's what he's going to need to do to make the team. Nobody's really talking about him. Yeah, I kind of have him as is the best of the rest at wide receiver right now. I think he's the barrier. Like I had a Traquan Smith. I got him there. I haven't I haven't noticed Traquan in two days. Like yeah. I haven't noticed him really for like the whole summer. I've noticed Brian Edwards consistently. I've noticed uh, James Washington more than Traquan. But I think the barrier to make the team is is Brian Edwards right now. Now that might flip. But if I'm setting it, like he's the guy that I'm kind of measuring everybody against. And because you're going to keep four tight ends too, it's even bigger competition with the wide receivers because you're most likely not going to keep six this year. You're only going to keep five. So after the big three, who's two, who's four and five? I mean, those positions are absolutely it, up for grabs. I, I didn't write this down, but since you're talking about the receiver battle, was it Kiki Kuti who had a really nice catch down the field from Jay Kaner where he kind of adjusted? Yeah, his he's, he's made a couple plays, um, and he's in the return. He's, and in, he's the return in the return mix. mix. So that's, that's a name I'm not going to just completely dismiss. He's, he's, he's actually got some good experience in the past. And then I didn't do my under-the-radar defense yet. These are guys we talked about when we did the 53-man roster projections, but um, Isaac Yadam and mm. Ugo Amadi um, – continue to be guys who just have like really good resumes and they're also not just being out there with the second string defense yadam is keeps working out every time they do uh uh punt formations as a, as a number one gunner amadi was in the mix as like a maybe a safe hands option as a as a punt returner it, it, it's just the more you can do when you're fighting for a 53 roster spot. Those are two guys that no one talks about that I that I think have real good shots to make the team. We had one show about Ugo Amani. Was yeah. it was it when we made our 53 man, man roster yeah. projections? Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, as far as the 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 roster construction, I'm not sure that I'm necessarily saying there's definitely four tight ends. I'm not necessarily sure yeah. that Jimmy okay. Graham's making the team yet. Right. I think that he's got to show like he didn't play last year, and that's mm -hmm. no disrespect to Jimmy. I think I think he probably will make the team, but. 
I'm not right. Like if I was doing my, my locks on the fence, all that stuff, like he'd be on the fence right now. Just, just being fair. It's two practices after a year off. He, he's got to he's got to show it consistently throughout the summer. Well, it's only day two, so I'm sure we're going to continue to uncover guys who are under the radar. We'll see if the gassers continue and if the coaches continue running with them. But thanks for joining us on another New Orleans Football show. We'll see you next time.